Salwete Omnes. Uh, hello, good evening, welcome. Uh, I am Decimus Aurelius. You are watching the Roman Twitch channel uh, uh, on Twitch, brought to you by Nova Roma. Uh, we are back here for what we're calling session 16 tonight of the Republic of Rome board game broadcast. Uh, now, certainly a point of interest, if you're watching this on YouTube in the future and you've just watched episode 15 and then you come into tonight, you'll notice there seems to be a little bit missing. So uh, we're missing the episode where our, our good senators play uh, the turn 11 Senate phase. Um, but so it was a bit of a recap of what happened there. Um, we eventually ended up appointing a dictator um, through Appius Rupius's faction in Quinticus, uh, Senator 18. Uh, there was an attempt at assassination attempt, which went, went nowhere. Um, but what the Senate really ultimately decided was to send Julius uh, from Tiberius Cornelius' faction into prosecuting the First Gallic War. Um, they also sent out some garrison legions out into some of the undeveloped provinces um, in preparation for the internal disorder, which will happen in the upcoming revenue phase there as well. Uh, they also decided not to prosecute the Bergamine request there, leaving the 50 talents uh, unclaimed for the time being. So that is where we're currently at. Uh, um, so we're now at the start of the combat phase with the Senate phase, sorry, the Senate phase now concluded. Um, so just a moment, we're going to transition into the virtual tabletop environment. So if you're watching live, don't go away. Uh, we'll be right back. Okay, we are here live now in the virtual tabletop environment, brought to us by Tabletop Simulator uh, and using a nice Republic of Rome board game uh, mod pack here as a basis uh, for our phenomenal forum. Uh, we'll do our usual checks, make sure everything is working and we'll get all of our senators to go, Salwete! Salwete! All right, good. Okay. That'll make sure we get the, uh, the volume come through. Um, good. Uh, it seems to be working on my end. Fantastic. So as I said before, we are at the start of the turn 11 combat phase. Uh, and there's certainly no reason why we can't get straight into that at the moment. We've got the first Gallic War to be prosecuted by Julius, as you see on your screen. Um, so, rightio. So, General, uh, if you'd like to bring up the combat calculator, as we do, uh, and let's start processing the sums before we roll the all-important die. So, Commander's military rating in this case is going to be four for Julius. Legion of Fleet Strength, we'll do the calculations there, where our veterans obviously count for two. Uh, and here we've got disaster and standoffs numbers of 13 and 15 only, base strength of 10 for the war. It's probably one of our simpler wars out there at the moment. Yeah, and the others out there, the third Punic, a little bit stronger at 14. Uh, and we've got the fourth Macedonian war there um, with uh, good strength, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 at the moment. Now, that's obviously increased because, of course, we've got... The Third Macedonian War, which will join us very shortly, and it looks like that will indeed increase the size of the Macedonian War, um, making it a little bit more challenging for our senators to deal with in a future turn. Um, but for now, we'll focus on the First Gallic War. So let's just double-check our numbers in the combat calculator, which you can see on the right of your screen. War strength, 10. Yep, DNS, 13 and 15. Uh -huh. uh, no leaders, which is great. And at the moment, we're looking for a dice roll modifier. We're going to add 8. To our roll of 3d6 in just a moment. So it's about an 81% chance of victory. So we're going to scroll up here to our combat results table. Here we are. And we're going to add, um, once uh, we look at the raw roll, make sure it's not a disaster or standoff number. Uh, we're then going to add eight to that, um, which is fairly healthy and hopefully defeat that war. So uh, Tiberius Cornelius, at your leisure, 3d6, please. And let's see how we go. Uh, Dice are rolling. 3d6. Total is five. Uh, the good news is it's not a disaster or standoff number, 13 or 15. Um, and uh, five plus eight, ladies and gentlemen, is 13. 13, which gives us. No, it wasn't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's going to pull us up just short by the looks of things. So, a result of 13 having rolled a five on the 3d6. It's going to give us a stalemate. Uh, now, thankfully, here on the chart, it's, it's no losses, um, but a stalemate's not particularly good for our predicament. Having three wars on the deck, uh, although it's okay at the end of the combat phase, uh, it will cause us some problems down the track, noting that, you know, we have this magic wall come across, and no doubt we're probably going to pull out some more in the next forum phase, so it will make our job much more difficult going forward. But anyway, let's pull up our sheet. There's a couple of things that we need to do. Uh, despite it not being a victory or a de defeat. Uh, and we're just going to roll through those now. Um, first of all, um, we've looked that there's going to be no losses, so that's good, nothing to do there. 
Um, now, of course, one legion from amongst the survivors still gets to be a veteran legion. So, Tiberius Cornelius, at your leisure, you get to pick uh, which of the uh, non-veteran legions is going to become a veteran. And if you'd like to get yourself the equivalent token for your Julius card back in Rome. So, who would you like to upgrade? He's going to select number two. Very good. Um, all right, so grab yourself the number two legion marker from the bag. Go add that on Ulysses' card back in Rome. And then I return my sheet here. Um, now, thankfully, we don't have to draw mortality chits because there were no units lost, which is also a bonus. Um, and subsequently, there's no loss of uh, popularity because there's no loss of legions as well. Uh, and at this stage here, we're going to turn Ulysses into a uh, pro console. Um, so he's going to stay on that marker as a pro console. Um, so somebody wants to grab a pro console marker for Julius. Uh, and, and subsequently, we're going to update his tokens back in Rome, grab his uh, field console marker. We'll stick that back up here. That's it. Uh, and put the pro console also back on Rome just to show that uh, he is out there. I'm pretty sure that, um, remind me, folks, Julius has been a pro console before in this game. Is that correct? I believe so. <laughs> That's been quite the trend for him. Um, now, uh, I guess the other question I want to ask at this stage, and I'm, I guess I'm reading my my notes here, um, that war is considered unprosecuted unless one legion fleet and a minimum of fleet support is present. Uh, it doesn't require fleet support for this war, uh, and we do have the minimum legion. So even though it's a stalemate, uh, I understand this war is considered prosecuted. Does everybody agree with that? Yes. I agree. I mean, it's not like you guys are going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that will make the other wars unprosecuted. So if we'd like to get the unprosecuted markers on the Fourth Macedonian War there, as well as the Third Punic, please. Uh, and that will cost us uh, some money at the relevant point down there. All right. Uh, now let's just double check. There is no provincial wars which are snuck up on us. Um, Fourth Macedonian War attacks Illyricum, but we've already lost Illyricum before. It's actually behind the Macedonian card there already. Uh, the First Gallic War attacks Gallia, uh, Kistelpina, and Gallia Narbonesis, uh, both of which we don't have yet, as well as Gallia Trans, uh, Transalpina, but we don't have that one either. Uh, Third Punic is not uh, attacking anything, um, but hopefully when we eventually defeat that, it will give us the province in Africa um, in good time. So I'm not seeing any other provincial wars at the moment. Uh, obviously, we are still weary of the internal disorder, but that will come into play in the revenue phase when we get there. And we'll just have to be really cognizant about um, revenue relative to the undeveloped provinces, which won't earn revenue at that point, but that's uh, early for now. Uh, now let's just double check our cheat sheet, um, which we have over here on the right hand side. Uh, so we've done Senate, we scroll down here, we can see combat phase, uh, there's no pro provincial wars we need to worry about, um, and there's uh, oh, unprosecuted war markers have been given, and we just now need to double check we are still within war exhaustion, which we are. Uh, we will need to continue to keep an eye on the first Gallic, which will age up in the next uh, two phases. Um, so we'll keep uh, watching there as well. That's getting very dangerous because uh, remember, if we have a marker at age six at the end of the combat phase, all players will lose. Okay, that means we'll get to move to the revolution phase from there. So let's go ahead and update our turn chart and we'll hit that button over there. We're now in the revolution phase. So... Uh, over here, we don't have the voluntary retirement rule in this game, but we do uh, look at the intrigue. So all players can freely trade cards from their hand only in this phase. So just give me a moment to have that discussion. If you'd like to trade cards, uh, you may do so now. Just give you a moment to do that or think about that at least. Maybe have some discussions. Those uh, Master Splinter doesn't seem to have any at the moment, curiously. Uh, everybody else seems to have at least two. Uh, Appius Rufius mm -hmm. seems to be doing rather well. A lot of cards. <laughs> uh, the, uh, one of the yeah. Yeah. I kept drawing walls, <laughs> <laughs> so you're to blame. One of the advantages about um, the current view in the in the I guess the game uh, GM mode that I'm in is uh, I can't actually physically see people's cards and they flip them over, which is good. So that means the senators can't screen sheet. Uh, I do like some of them. I uh, like to watch the stream in support in the background, uh, but they therefore can't spy 
on the card by watching the live stream. So uh, yeah, that's good. Who, now. Would, who would do that? <laughs> yeah. Who would, who I didn't even that? understand what you said. I was like, what? How do you do that? <laughs> like, uh, you're innocent then. Okay, good. <laughs> awesome I coffee. can't even use a mobile phone properly, really. It's like. <laughs> I'll just use the excuse I'm a scribe. I need to make sure I get yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Everything's going to be accurate. Uh, so does anybody have any intentions to trade card at this stage? No. No, uh, it doesn't look like it's the case. So going back down here, um, we just want to make sure that every player with more than five cards decides, uh, discards those exceeding, but we don't have anybody with more than five. Uh, so that is fine at that point. Uh, and now we normally talk about declarations of rebellion, but we don't have any uh, returning um, uh, command at this stage, but we do need to ask the questions of the governors. If the governors themselves feel like, um, uh, you know, going into a revolt or be, becoming a rebel, um, so um, I, I've got no particular order here, and I, I haven't checked the rules recently to see if there is an order. But nonetheless, the strongest governor would win out as as the rebel here. I think I think you could have. So you can't have multiples um, at the very least. Um, it gets quite complex when you get into governor. Rebellion, but nonetheless, the rules still exist. But let's go around the board and ask. Uh, let's see, uh, Tiberius Cornelius, starting with Sempronius, is is he looking to rebel? Or is he going to stay loyal? No, he's loyal. Great. Uh, let's ask um, Marta Cornelius. Is Capito going to stay loyal? I also don't feel like there would be enough manpower anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Corsica uh, et uh, Sardinia with um, the Hand faction, which is our good friend Quintus Octavius. Uh, is he going to be staying loyal? Uh, he will be for now. <laughs> Good. Uh, and what about Terentius and Tequila? Uh He will be as well for now. <laughs> Good. Uh, and then across, uh, Marco Edi will Flam uh, Flamin Flaminius uh, down in there in Cyprius. Uh, will he remain loyal? Yes, Mark Weddy, I'm so sure he oh, will. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I, is that, yeah. He is me. I was about to say that person doesn't have any, but that's me. Like, yep. you know, how can that He's got a garrison legion there. Um, so that's good. <laughs> so it looks like all our governors will also uh, remain loyal at this stage. Uh, so therefore, there's uh, no declarations of rebellion and we'll be able to sum up the uh, revolution phase there. Mm -hmm. So noting, you know, we're looking at the unrest level is in control. We haven't had the populace rebel. Uh, we've still got less than uh with uh less than four wars on the board uh we've still got a positive isn't, treasury i'll be only 50 so one question though uh, mm. one question though isn't isn't there the option to play cards uh, uh, yeah, yeah yeah you're right not we've yet. we've missed that little bit there um and then yes yeah, so at this point here under intrigue which is starting with the hrao so let us start with you as a good dictator so good, good so you're paying attention um would you like to play a card at this stage Yes, I will play All right, so he's going to play a statesman. Uh, oh, he's playing the relative statesman for his family card. Very good. Um, so he'll transfer all the tokens uh, on top there. Um, and fantastic. And he nullifies disaster standoff numbers on Macedonian wars, but not on any leaders. Oh, well, that's a good one. Uh, and he can't be in the same faction as Cato. You're going to um, be sacrificed next game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Plain so pending fuel console, perhaps. Um, all right, very good. Um, is there anything else you need to play at this stage there? Happy Rufius, you're good? No, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, uh, Tiberius Cornelius, any cards you want to play at this stage? Uh, not for me, thanks. Uh, Mark, where do you, any cards you want to play at this stage? No cards, no. Cool. Uh, uh, I'll ask you anyway. Marcus Dickens, any cards you want to play? I'm perfectly fine, thank you. Very good. Um, I think your video is frozen, Marcus Decimus. If you want to care to rejoin on the uh, on the ninja. All right, he'll be coming back. Numerus Aurelius, would you like to uh, play any cards at this stage? No, thank you. Very good. Um, and finally, Quintus Octavius, uh, would you like to play any cards at this stage? Not at the moment. Not at the moment for you. Okay, good. All right, so now that will conclude a revolution phase, unless I've forgotten anything else. Remember, hold your peace. All right, now that we're all good. So let's uh, now let's um, move the marker to the mortality phase. We're now in turn 12, and courtesy of the green X at the front, that's going to show us turn uh, 12 uh, mortality phase. No, yes. Is that right? Yes, because we are now in turn 12. We've just done turn 11. Uh, so let's go look at a cheat sheet. There's a couple of things we need to do uh, coming over here. So we come up at the top. Uh, imminent war activation. One war from every set of matched wars is moved from imminent to active following war number order. So we're going to move that across. Um, and now they're going to be matched. Uh, that also means we'll end up prosecuting the third Macedonian first. 
before the fourth, uh, with all its additions obviously put on, of course. Um, uh, so that is now matching. So, uh, yes, that is quite a difficult. What's that total? What are we looking at there? Uh, that's a total of 23. 23. That is an exceptionally strong war, isn't it? Yeah, so um, who's the strongest person to send to that? Uh, that would be Quinticus, the one who was just put in as a faction uh, senator. The um, family one. Oh. Mm. Ooh, uh, there we go. Let us, let us now all age up the wars, please. Uh, so age four for first Gallic and age two for the others. Uh, we won't worry about the Sicilian slave revolt because it's inactive. It's not an active war. It's not aging. So it will remain blank for the time being. But the other wars will age. Uh, and then uh, we can see from here, uh, we, uh, we don't do the aging centers as it specifies on our cheat sheet, but what it does require us to do is to draw two mortality chits. Um, and if the number is drawn, that center will get an elder token. If they're already an elder, then they will perch, <laughs> fall off the perch um, and uh, they lose all their tokens unless they're a faction leader where they get to hold the card. So, uh, Mark, where do you, I can see you're hovering around the yep. mortality chits. How if you want to draw two chits, just two. Number one, number two. I've got four and 23. Who are the unlucky ones? I've got 23. Uh, uh, please tell me they're not Elder. Oh, no. They're Elder. That would be our lovely pro console as well. Now, it says 23A. Is 23B on the board? Uh... Oh, no. And there's four. Uh, but he's not Elder yet, is he? Nope. Good. All right. So Julius is just going to become an elder. So you want to grab an elder token for him to use Cornelius right next to the mortality bag. Uh, and it looks like we're going to say farewell to Papilius Lanus, um, oh. which is quite disappointing because that is a, um, a statesman. So the statesman disappears into the discard pile and the family senator uh, will move into the forum. Uh, it wasn't a family card underneath that, was there? No. no. It was just the statesman. Yeah, okay. Um, and then those tokens get returned to their respectful um, places of origin, and we can now return those mortality chits back into the bag. So, yeah, it's interesting evolution there. One death and one aging. Um, and then, uh, yes, Marcus Nicholas takes another hit, which is, uh, yes, the most unfortunate. Home. Yes, the nursing home. <laughs> yeah. Deaths in the nursing home. Yes. Weekly occurrence. Uh, all right, now I think that will wrap up our mortality phase. So again, folks, just double checking for me. All right. Yeah. All right, now we're going to move into revenue phase. Um, let's bring up our revenue calculator tool if somebody would like to do that. Oh, math. Oh, uh, and right. go through the normal motions, noting we do have to look after the internal order card here. And I'll tell you how we will handle that in just a moment. But so let's bring up the tools. Uh, bring up the revenue calculator and uh, everybody, let's go to town. Tick your box uh, when you're finished. Don't forget um, to take your concessions uh, and reveal the corrupt portion of your card, uh, except for if you've got a special card that only invokes uh, currency at a certain time, like um, uh, one of the armored ones or the shipbuilding concession. They only obviously come out at that relevant point. But for everybody else, please yeah. make sure you claim your concessions uh, by ticking the boxes. The notes away from Rome count. Oh, uh, hang on, let's tick some boxes. Yes, yes. If you're away from Rome, you, you still your knights still calculate. That's 100. percent Yep. So make sure you add all your knights. Uh, I'll add the type three land bill on the. Oh, sorry, he's already done that. Very yep. good. Um, somebody will come in and calculate all the active forces for me in a minute as well. We've got three active wars. Oh, the match wars count as a fourth active war? It would have to, but it's probably not unprosecuted yet. Yeah, the, I keep. Um, we ask this question every time it comes up. What was the question? Uh, pardon me? Uh, does the matching wars count as our fourth active war? I'm confused. Um, um, so all, all, all matching, this is one war. This All, all matching war. Macedonian wars is one war now. As I thought. I was right. going to say, it's not until they're separated and attacked individually, they don't become separate, I believe. Yeah, because you, you could attack them at the same time, which I, it would be interesting mechanic. Let's say you attack 
the let's say you fail on all your wars to get a victory in your next combat phase and if you attached attacked both the macedonian wars separately um although they're still adding are they separate wars and therefore count as four so if you fail in your combat and fail to get any victory would that mean then be a defeat because you got more than three wars that's an interesting question we'll leave that to the experts to ponder in the background um because, yeah, I guess right now, and I concur that we've only got the three active wars, uh, despite the, the one being two matching. Yeah, no evil omens, 22 active legions, seven fleets. Three wars. Uh, no droughts, correct? From no, Kent. we don't see any droughts on the board. No, no. So there is a drought on Sicilian slave reward, correct? There is a what, sorry? Yes, there is one. We do have one drought. has a drought. Probably. One one drought. Yeah, on the Sicilian slave revolt. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So we'll add that drought on. How are we doing? So we're just running on Marcoeria and How do we Quintus know of if it's improved or not? I can't uh, so, green border. Yeah, so the oh, province okay. if it has a green border shows that it is improved. Okay. All right, then I'm ready. And uh, obviously through the course of our um, the calculations, the, the little uh, receipt that you get as you scroll through will tell you whether your province upgraded or not. Um, you'll also check if you're taking um, corruptions and don't forget, yeah, um, so spoil rather. So it looks like Hispania Ulteria oh, so is going to take spoils. Uh, spoils. Uh, Hispania Kiteria is going to take spoils. Mark, oh, where is going to take that? Is even though I might assassinate people allegedly. I'm not looting my governorships. <laughs> what is it? How much do you get for spoils? And I thought it went back into buying things to protect them. So if you have a look at your card, so provincial spoils, um, that top yep. line there, in, in the case of Hispania Ulteria, it'll yep. be a 1v6 plus 1. Uh, in the case of your province with Hispania Quiterior, yours is a 1v6 minus 2, right? Now, um, the, the state has to pay any debts on that uh, if that comes out as a negative number, unless you choose to pay it, of course. Oh, okay. And what about this other one here? Uh, over here, yeah, um, so this one says, yeah, 1d6 minus 4. So it gets a very oh. high chance of debt on that one. Oh, okay. My one's unless you're rolling a 6 one. or a 5. Um, so it looks like the spoils have come off. <laughs> That doesn't seem very... So we've got two improved level. provinces. We've got uh, Corsica and Sardinia. That's uh, one tick. And the other tick, of course, is Hispania Ulteria. Good. Um, we'll just make sure all the other ones are... T um, provinces are claimed. Yes. Yes. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. One, two, three, four. Um, oh. Yep. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Cool. We're five for five. All right. Excellent. Great some progress. So everybody's calculated the correct amount of senators. Got the correct amount of knights. Nobody's missing any knights on their calculators. Uh, everybody ticks that they've got their leader assigned because nobody's not having a leader assigned right now. Should someone tick Pontius Maximus? Uh, yes. Sorry, Who's right. missing their Pontius Maximus? There you go. Good call. All right. I think we're really good here. Now, uh, before we hit the calculate button, uh, I want our governors for the undeveloped provinces to note that you're not receiving any revenue from that this round. So uh, when, you, when we hit the calculate button, you'll see a total figure, but please scroll through your receipt, find out how much your province gained or, or lost, right? Um, and essentially you ignore that figure, right? So that's not occurring in this round. There's no calculations occurring for the undeveloped provinces, all right? What about possible improvements? So again, no, I don't know if improvements, and may not make an improvement attempt. So even if your receipt says it improves, you ignore it, okay? So, so you may as well just unselect the ones that are... Sorry, what was that? So you may as well just unselect them? Actually, it's a good point. Should I just unselect mine? Yes, I think you're right, 100%. Me too. Yeah, yeah. So uh, one more question. Hispania Ulterior has improved and spoils uh, marked. Um... Oh, that's because, ulterior, yeah. yes. Yep, that that is an improved. That's okay. Card, so, that's yeah. valid. And so is a uh, Sardinia. Well, yeah. Yep, Corsica. Sardinia Corsica is the other improved one. That's fine, and that will remain uninfected. Um, 
everything else is uh, unimproved. Uh, hang on, somebody's missing. Uh, Sakila is unimproved. Yeah, cool. So we've unselected the provinces which aren't being calculated or upgraded this round. That's very good. Um, I mean, what I meant is, can you improve and take spoils at uh, at the same turn? Uh, you can take spoils, but it'll reduce your chance of being able to improve the province. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, and if it is already improved, you can still take spoils. Yeah, that's fine. Um, there's corruption either way um, that will come along. Um, so what we'll do in a minute, we'll hit calculate. We'll let everybody get the numbers. So as you see, the number will be the number that you get for your faction. You, of course, you'll be able to distribute that amongst your senators and your, and your hidden faction treasury as we normally would. Uh, and then we'll get to the point. Um, we'll let the developed provinces do their thing. And then we'll do all the roles necessary for the event card for the undeveloped provinces towards the end there, um, not leaving them out. All right. Hopefully no wars result in those. So let's hit that generate revenue button. I think we've got across the board. Nobody's missing a mining concession. Great. Okay. So we're there. Um, we'll let the factions go through. I'll just rattle off to see what we see at the moment. So uh, Marta Wendy is doing really well. He's going to gain 22 talents this round. Um, Tiberius Cornelius is going to grab 21 talents. And then we've got um, Appius Rufius gains a generous six talents there. That's really good. Venus Octavius gets 10. Numerus Aurelius gets 16. And then Marcus Decimus is going to get 10. <clears throat> All right, so yeah, not not complicated right now, which is good. Um, we'll we'll update the governor markers in just a moment. Don't worry about those. Just um, just uh, deal with uh, getting your funds and distributing those as you like between your senators and your hidden faction treasuries. And I'll get somebody to um, update the state treasury whoever finishes first. We're going to lose twenty two there, so from fifty nine minus twenty two. Down to 37 talents, so that's pretty shy. All right. Uh, don't forget to tick your box when you're finished. Uh, we're going to now tick the state. It's calculated. It's done. It's it. All right. Yes, you may um, distribute your funds between your all your senators and your hidden faction treasury. Don't forget that, you know, you've still got the chances to donate to the state if you wish, as well as growing gain. So think about that for senators that you wish to do that. So you remember donating to the state is going to come from a single purse of one of your senators. All right, just waiting on Mark, you're where the uh, oh, Tiberius sorry, Cornelius. Yeah. Um, Octavius, we're waiting for. Tiberius Aurelius, we're waiting for. <clears throat> Okay, nearly there. All right, and just waiting on Amirus Aurelius now. Waiting for him to tick his box. And I, um, I think Amirus Aurelius, you'll also benefit from a, uh, a rejoin on the ninja as well. It looks like your camera's fading a bit there. All right, so he's going to rejoin. And uh, I assume uh, he's good to go. So let's, uh, we can close that box now. Let's tick his box, let that happen. Good, okay. All right, so now let's go through and um, let's work out our governors and the provinces uh, so they can do some things. So let's go for Tiberius Cornelius's Hispania Ulterior. Um, so he's, uh, you look like you've, have you already upgraded your term goal? Looks like he's gonna come back to Rome. Uh, yeah, he does. Um, That's right. He's, so, uh, yeah, so I haven't updated yeah. it yet. Yeah. So um, now let's just double check. We've asked the question before. Um, does he get to still um, make yes. some decisions in the province before he goes? Right. So um, from here, um, how many? You're allowed a maximum of ten uh, provincial forces. Uh, you've got twenty to spend, which is equivalent of two. I'm assuming you'd like to spend them. I would. Yes. All right. Grab yourself uh, two new provincial armies and add those to Hispania Ulterior. That would be very good. Where do they come from? Oh, down here. I'll see down there. Uh, let's go across to our other developed province uh, in Korska at Sardinia. Um, now, has that term dial been updated yet there? They, ha they have. All of them they have. have good. So updated. you're only on term two, which is good. Uh, you're only at maximum of one unit, but you can have up to five ships. So I'm assuming you'd like to grab one of those um, tri-marines. 
or uh, ten. Yep, very good. Uh, capsized, brilliant. And I think that's it for developed provinces for now. That so is, yeah. let's return our governor from Hispania ulterior. Um, I'll grab that um, governor card, and governor ship card, and bring that back. And while we're here, I can flip that. Turn back to state one, ready for voting on the next Senate phase. Uh, we'll bring this unit back for Bruce Cornelius. And of course, um, bring that. There we go. All right. The other so, provinces can also raise the, forces. What's that, sorry? The other provinces can also raise forces. As so well. they can still raise forces at this stage? Yes, I'm reading the card right now, and I was looking at it, and it does not say anything about no. Like yeah, no, all undeveloped provinces have because, no unless you're counting revenue. The local oh, it says no taxes. revenue, though. So yeah, is the local is, taxes counted as revenue, though? Yeah, correct. So local taxes revenue, so they can't actually generate okay. forces. So, uh, hey, look, it's worth asking those questions, right? Because uh, it makes us think, and you know, it doesn't disadvantage us anyway if we had missed something. So, so it's good. All right. So now, um, and I'm going to bring this little card with us as we go through an action, all these provinces to see how we go. So the, the critical part here is um, we're going to be able to have our governors in the undeveloped provinces roll at one d six, and for every garrison they have, which I think is all of them, they get to add plus one. A result of greater than four, so we're looking for fives and sixes, is required to avoid a revolt. So five and six are good. A successful revolt will kill the governor, so four or less, um, and his uh, and his garrison, and moves the province card to the forum as an active war. So this is uh, could be quite potent. Um, one question though, yeah. I, I didn't remember. Uh, was the war exhaustion war exhaustion um, be applied to the first Gallic War also? Yes. I, okay. okay. Yes, it, it was applied. The war exhaustion. Yes. Yes. Uh, hang on, no, that should be age four now. Yeah, so it looks like it was age So, good question we'll ask. Let's uh, make that age four. Good, thank you. Good pickup. Okay, so let's uh, get into it. Marika Wendy, you're going to be our first victim. I mean, dice roller. Uh, you're looking. <laughs> it was a one uh, you're you need the plus one, so roll uh, at least a four, please, in a one D six. Here we go. I rolled yeah, a four. Good. All right, so you're going to pass. You rolled a four plus one with the garrison is five, so cool. your province doesn't revolt, which is fantastic news. Very good. Mm -hmm. Let's move across to our next underdeveloped province in Sicilia, the yeah, bread basket. I'll, I'll It'd be really unfortunate if this was to go. Uh, there's a garrison there, so we're looking for a four or more again. Please, Quintus Octavius. I could roll a one and I would be fine because it's plus one per garrison or legion. Uh, is that right? I thought it just said garrison. Yes. Yeah, it says that the plus per garrison or legion. Yeah, we've only got the one, it's, it's we've only got the one garrison legion, though. Yeah, do I have one? Oh, I do have one garrison. Yeah, yeah, you've got one garrison legion, but it doesn't count the provincial army, so oh, you're still only looking for shame. a four or more. Yep. No. So that is only gets us too far, which means the war is going to revolt. Um, so mm -hmm. the, the governor is going to get killed there. So unfortunately, we've lost Paul Terentia. So I'll let Quintus Octavius action that at the moment. Um, kills the governor and his garrison. So we lose the garrison legion. So if somebody wants to return oh, that to the pool. Um, so that's that's a not not great for Rome or Quintus Octavius. Uh, we can uh, oh, right move to Marca, and Sicilia is going to become a war, an active war out there. In there, so we're going to have four active wars to to deal with. Uh, that legion will disappear into the well, legions. I'm and glad the, I took the money off them. <laughs> Good idea. Uh, yeah. And uh, now, the, the the question I have here is: those provincial armies, I'm assuming they join the province. This is the question I've got. So that we, we can tell that the garrison was killed, um, kills the governor and his garrison and moves the province card to the form as an act of war. The province in revolt, like this should be considered a war card in all respects with its strength being equal to the province's print. So uh, I guess that is the current question I have at the moment is do these provincial forces... I would say no because it uh, says um, with its strength being equal to the province's printed base land and fleet strength. So. Ah, oh, okay, yeah. So it's, it's, it sounds like we've killed the provincial forces, provincial armies. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, uh, I, I like your, your logic there. Your logic's very sound. So it doesn't say, it doesn't mention it at all, which means we can assume they're all lost. So the provincial armies disappear <clears throat> or Sicilia. 
They I would say well. they fled like cowards. That's <laughs> <Because yes>. <laughs> Or if they're a part of the local pop pop populace, they just drop their their arms and join the revolt. Right. They turn yeah. their swords into plowshares. Went home for the harvest. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now let's go over to uh, Kilia at Cyprus. I noticed our respective governor has just left the room for the for the moment, but it will be <laughs> for uh, very very similar to him here. Um, she's trying to avoid the role. That's, <laughs> that's, that's what's happening. Also, um, it's a case of four or more that we're looking for again here. Um, I did write the first one. If your province uh, premature, I let, I let her put her headphones back on. We at the moment. Here we go. Welcome back, Mark Wedia. We're going to need your role again as governor. Oh, uh, right we're looking now? for a yes, please, a four or more on a one d six when you are ready. Or a more than I did. Hey, hey that Yay. one is saved. That's really good news. Um, you talk now. About I'm it. just going to put this event card with the uh, province down here, just to remind us of strength values or whatever. If we get confused in the future, um, there we go. So that is Sadness. our the only <laughs> province we lost this round as a result of that. So that's, I guess, it could have been worse, right? Oh. So that's oh. that's not too bad. <laughs> Depends right. who you are. Depends on who you ask. Yes. Um, so we've talked about province developments. Um, we're now going to look at state revenue, give everybody an opportunity if they like to contribute to the state treasury because it is looking a bit sore. Uh, let's start with our HRAO. Dictator, would you like to contribute any funds to the state treasury today? Not today. Not today. Okay. Tobias Cornelius, would you like to donate any funds to the state treasury? Yeah, Flacus will contribute 20. All right, uh, Flakis is going to contribute 20 to the state revenue, which will give him one influence, uh, and uh, add 20 to the state treasury. If somebody would like to up it from 37 to 57. Good, and one influence for Flakis. Have you added his influences? Don't forget to move. Yeah, yeah. Good, perfect. Uh, and Mark, would you like to donate any money to the state treasury today? Um, yes, I was gonna thinking of making a donation from Valerius. Oh, uh, Valerius is gonna make how much? I can do 25. 25, that's very good. So let's up the state treasury by 25, please. Quintus Octavius, and that will be three influence for Valerius, please. Mm -hmm. Three influence for Valerius. Let me have a little white square. That's it. You can make that an eight. Uh, and the state treasury is increased again, which is excellent. All right, and uh, let's go across to Marcus Deckers. Marcus Deckers, any funds to the state treasury today? Not today, thank you. Okay, and uh, Numerus Aurelius, any funds to the state treasury today? No, oh, thank you. No, thank you. Quintus Octavius, any funds to the state treasury today? Uh, yeah, 25, please. 25 from? Uh, Achilles. Achilles is going to donate 25. There'll be three influence for Achilles and another 25 funds to the state treasury, which is good it's looking a little bit better yeah more healthy more healthy all right fantastic we'll go across to our cheat sheet while the final sums being done there uh, as we know the debts have been done local forces have been done uh and the governors all the governors have updated your dials is that correct they are all updated yes all updated so uh term two i'm seeing term two and uh papyrus is on turn two good okay so that's all good noting we lost one province okay <laughs> have we forgotten anything in the revenue phase ladies and gentlemen uh, i think we're pretty good I believe we're done ready all right yep we uh handled the active and prosecuted wars okay land bills was taken care of yeah i think we're okay all right so let's uh let's advance on from the revenue phase uh, and that's going to bring us to the forum phase. And as we can see from the forum phase, which uh, we come up uh, down to here, yep, there we go. Uh, we're going to do our usual initiative steps, which involves a 2d6 roll, which will uh, happen for all of our senators. Uh, and they're looking for that magic seven or not. If it becomes a seven, it'll be an event. Uh, they miss out on a card draw, but they will get to complete the other four elements of their initiative, which includes persuasions, attracting knights, sponsoring games, and any change of faction leader that they like. And we'll start with the HRAO, which is currently the dictator, Appius Rufius. 2d6 when you're ready, uh, and let's see what happens. 
Here comes the two die, looking great. I got seven, so it's going to be an event. We do need to recall we're in the Middle Republic. So we go to the random events table over here. We can see the Middle Republic, and now Appius Rufus is going to roll his 3d6, and we're going to see what happens for us here. 14, Hopefully for a please. good event. Yes. <laughs> yes. Roll 3d6, total is eight. Eight is going to be an eternal. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Let's just take that card out from behind Tequila. We just got rid of it, and now we're going to bring it straight back in again. So next revenue phase, we're going to deal with it again. Obviously, the, the provinces are unhappy. Um, God, okay, wow. That's extraordinary. Um, let's complete Appius Rufius' to turn. Appius Rufius, any persuasion attempts from you today? Um, I'm thinking about... Maybe I try Claudius. You'd like to try Claudius? Yeah, let's bring up our calculator. Let's make it easy for ourselves. Uh, on the on the tools, and we'll run the sums. So, who's going to be doing the persuading today? It's probably a silly question to ask. Um, yeah, but it's Flavinius I mean, with yeah. his Lord uh, influence of fifteen there. So, we're going to add that to our calculator. Uh, and what's his oratory? It's four. Yeah, that's a good oratory. I like that. That's uh, fairly solid. Um, and we'll talk about bribes in just a minute. The loyalty rating of our persuade is under my hair, which is seven, and uh, he's currently not aligned. I'm um, currently looking at a, a target dice of, of 12, which is not a particularly great um, number because it's really we're looking for 10 or less. So um, we'd like to add some bribes at this stage. Um, uh, bribes comes from the personal purse of the persuader. Yeah. Uh, maybe three then, okay. Go All right, with. he's going to add three bribes, so we'll add that to our calculator as well, which... Uh, um, Wait. Uh, gives us up to 15. So maybe I'm, I'm reading the chart wrong. So I'll uh, see we, we, um, maybe. we'll roll less than this number. So, yeah, so 12 was also good. So I was. And then, then I will not do this. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, let's let's yeah, give you the opportunity to take that back. Let's not good. go on my, my mistaken thing there. Because really, what we need to do here is uh, roll nine okay. or less. So, as we see, yeah. 10, 11, or 12 are automatic. What, failure. It, what it means. What it means that it's an automatic failure. Yes. The other one, yeah. um, right. So it's good. So you've, you've opened up all your options, but nonetheless, um, let's ask everybody else if yeah. they want to counter this particular persuasion attempt at this stage. So, Bruce Cornelius, anything from your faction treasury to counter this? No. Uh, Mark Weddy, anything from your faction treasury to counter this? No, it's a no. That's okay. I saw the head shake. That's all right. Uh, Marcus Decimus, anything from your faction treasury to counter? Not today, thank you. Good. Uh, Numerous Aurelius, anything to counter from your faction treasury? Um, no, nah, she'll be right. No, nah, she'll be right, mate. That's classic uh, Australian. That's particularly Roman. Brutus Octavius, uh, anything from your faction treasury? <laughs> no, we're all good. No, we're all good there. So you're going to do this unopposed. So uh, nine or less there, Appius Rufius uh, on a 2d6. Perfect. That's great. Um, and look, that's probably going to... Um, person who needs it most. So Claudius will join your faction there. Don't forget to update your faction vote tally as well. Okay. Uh, that will increase a little bit as well. Um, I bet we're a little bit off from the Senate phase, but nonetheless, we'll get there eventually. Uh, let's continue with the rest of your uh, initiative, um, starting with Knight. So who's going to be having a go for a Knight today? Uh, it's uh, Krinkus. Krinkus, any money uh, for the cause? Can we get a free roll? Do a free roll. Free roll. All right, let's see. Looking for a six. Oh, so close, uh, but no cigar. Um, any sponsoring of any games today? No, no, and no and finally, changing of faction leader. Would you like to change your faction leader? Will not, will not change. You're all good. All right, Tiberius Cornelius, you are now up 2d6 when you're ready. Let's see what happens. <clears throat> okay, the two lights have popped up. That's not a seven. So you get to draw a card, good sir. From the pile, um, what are the mechanisms? Click and drag. Is click that the pile there? 86. Yep, that's the pile. That's the draw pile. Yep. He's going to take that into his hand. He's going to inspect it. Red faction is kept by you. Anything black or forum card comes back out to us. And it is coming uh, back out to us. Yeah, there we go. Let's, uh, let's uh, bring this up and, and have a bit of a gander. So for everybody at home, I'm going to bring this up. It's called the Lustanian War. It's a middle... Republic War of Conflict Size 6. Um, now, it's got a questionable active token. So it asks if Hispania Catirior and Hispania Ulterior are not yet provinces treated as inactive until the revolution phase that they are, but because they do exist, this will become an active war. So yet another war is going to be added to the pile. 
So we're now up to a total of five active wars in the pot. This is becoming very difficult. Um, let's finish off, nonetheless, your initiative there to Prince Cornelius uh, from here. Uh, any persuasion attempt from you today? <clears throat> no. Uh, who's going to go for a knight? Uh, Sempronius. Sempronius is going for a knight. Any money for the cause? Yeah, you put on three. Three. So you're going to roll a six, a five, a four, or a three. And nope, that's not going to work out. Um, a little bit of loss of money. Any uh, sponsoring now, any hey? games today? Uh, yes. So, Skippy of Carnus. Skippy of Carnus. A gala. He is going to do a gala, uh, which is the top one there, cost of 18, which will increase his popularity by three and reduce the unrest level by three, which will bring us down to an unrest level of one, which is very good. I've just updated that uh, and increase the popularity for Scipio for the so that's fantastic. How much, how much is the popularity? Three. Three. Three popularity, yes. The maximum you can get for that, and you've had deducted his funds. Very good. Um, uh, any change of faction leader today? No. All right. That'll conclude your turn. Marco Wedia, 2d6. When you're ready, please. Uh, looking for a seven or not. Great. Here comes the two die. They're rolling. Uh, three, that's very good. Draw a card from the draw pile in the middle of the game board. Uh, have a look in your hand. Red text you keep, black text or forum cards come back out to us. It's not good. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's that's not positive. Okay, let's have a squeeze. We're looking at the Numantine War, the second of three Spanish revolts, and it asks if Hispania Caterior... Uh, is not yet a province treated as an active, but guess what? We do have the province active. That's going to be another active war. <laughs> is it stacked Strat with the first one, or is it? Uh, no, they're two different wars. Oh, hang on, no, I lied. Wait, wait, no, no, no. They are not, and therefore, not, therefore, yeah. they will not match immediately, right? They're not matching what? immediately. So, Newman um, so kind goes off into imminent. That's right. Woo. That's probably good for us. <laughs> that is a welcome treat. How many active wars are we allowed again? Uh, three, no more than three at the end of the combat phase. So you'll have to defeat at least two at this rate. Oh, good. Um, uh, let's finish off the initiative for Marika Wedi. Marika Wedi, any persuasion attempt from you today? Not today. Uh, who's rolling for a knight? Flaminius, and we'll put four. Flaminius, any money? Uh, he's going to donate four, was that? Yep. So you're going to roll a six, a five, a four, a three, or a two. So just roll, don't, don't roll a one. Yeah, you're great. Grab a knight yeah. for Flaminius there. He goes up by one. Money well spent. Uh, any sponsoring of any games today? Not today. And finally, any change of faction leader? Um, any change of faction leader? No, because I'm still like going to protect whoever else is in there. Do, who do I love? Who do I love more, Papirius or Flaminius? Hang on, let me have a look. <laughs> um, now I, I need to double check. Um, are people outside of Rome allowed to roll for a knight? Oh. I don't. I don't think so. Somebody want to be able to check that the rules? I don't think they can. That's got to be somebody in Rome. And that makes oh, you sense. need to be in Rome in order to roll for. You've got to be in Rome. All right. Oh, so sorry. let um, let let me fund from Aeneas. From Platius towards. Okay. Everything. All right. So let's so just to detect the night. Good, good pick up by us. Uh, and make sure you give Flaminius his money back. And let's give his money back. That's it. And Flaminius, uh, Platius, going to give two, did you say? Um, yeah, I don't know. I was sure, going to sure. give two from Platius. Great, six. So um, you're going to get a six, a five, or a four. So let's roll your 1d6 again. Well, Unlucky. Well, so well. that's not money well spent this time. Okay. Um, uh, from here, uh, we were talking about sponsoring of games. So let's go back no. to that. No, no sponsoring no, of games. Know. And we okay. talked about no change of faction leader. Okay. No. All right. Um, good. Um, from here, oh. uh, your initiative is finished, so we can go across to Marcus Decimus. Marcus Decimus, 2d6 when you're ready. Uh, let's see what happens. Six is Safe. not seven, so you get to draw a card. Hopefully you get to keep one today. All right, he's done the one trick, so let's see what it is. I get to keep it. Oh, hooray. And everybody else rejoices as well. Um, that's very good. Any persuasion attempts from you today? Not today, thanks. Uh, and any um, uh, night rolls? Who's going to roll for a night? Sorry, did I miss something? Who's, who's rolling for a night? Oh, he's rejoining. Okay. We'll give him a moment to, to rejoin. 
Uh, and so he's going to think about uh, a night. It's a free roll, so he'll do it for for uh, whatever he's thinking. I have an, another question. Yes. Um, what was the maximum amount of age a war can have in order to... Six. Okay. Six is the maximum age. So if oh, we get to the end of the combat close, phase right? and it has six at the end of the combat phase, um, it will be game over. So four is okay, five is okay, six means you must defeat it that round. Yep. Uh, good question. Good question. All right. So we'll, uh, Mark, Marcus Deckless is uh, doing a big rejoin. He's going to rejoin us on the virtual tabletop. Uh, and he's going to uh, rejoin us on the uh, on the on the Discord uh, Ninja in the background as well. What we might do, because uh, that'll take him some time to rejoin. It's a, it's a little bit unorthodox. Well, he has drawn his card though. Um, is we'll move on to Numerus Aurelius and then finish the initiative for for Marcus Decimus uh, in just a moment. So uh, he's coming online there. So that's actually a good sign. We'll, we'll just give him to see how how good his ping is, and uh, if it's good, yeah, it's coming on good. We'll wait. We'll wait. We'll let him finish off his uh, his initiative. In a bit of a master reset. All right, so Marcus Decimus is back. Uh, we'll wait for him to rejoin our our, um, our audio and our camera. We'll go from there. <clears throat> we might let Numerus Aurelius draw your card. Numerus Aurelius, let's do 2d6 roll for you while we're waiting. Keep things flowing. All right, Numerius Aurelius is going to get four. All right, draw a card, Numerius Aurelius. Black text forum cards come back at first. Red text you keep. Uh, red text. Red text, you get to keep that. Um, all right, and let's carry on. Ah, oh, here we go. Um, cool, Marcus Nicholas is back. Let's finish off his initiative. Um, so we, we're talking about night rolling, Marcus Nicholas. I'm going to put, uh, for Cassius, I'm going to put uh, four. Four, so just don't Cows. roll one. Yep. All right, looking for anything but a one. That's healthy, Thanks. very good. That's a night for Cassius. And uh, sponsoring any games today? I will. Cassius will sponsor, we'll do the slice and dice, I believe, today. A slice and dice, that'll cost you seven. You'll get one popularity there, and we'll get rid of that last unrest, which is fantastic. I'll update the unrest. You've updated the, the purse to Cassius and make sure he gets his popularity, uh, which is one. A little white square again. Uh, and finally, any change of faction leader from you today? Not today, thank you. All right, Numerius Aurelius, let's finish off your initiative. You just rolled your 2d6, you got a faction card. Any persuasion attempts from you today? Uh, just give me a quick second here, if it's all right. Just calculations. Yeah, that's right. Take a, just take a brief moment, have a think. All right. Uh, yes. So, Cato, the elder, will... All right, Cato. Um, now, can you persuade somebody out of Rome? Is my next question. Oh crap! Yeah, I don't think that. I, mm. I suspect you can't. I didn't think. Um, I want to go for somebody else, I guess. Mm. Do, 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 try, potentially looking to leverage the higher influence of Cato to maybe persuade somebody to his faction. We will see. Sorry, give me a second. Yeah. That's okay. I'm I'm happy to wait a little. Like I said, we're not in a not in a significant rush at all. Um, you know, look. After all, technically, if those that are keeping on the dates watching this on YouTube in the future, we've been playing for nearly a year and a half now. <laughs> this this game. Um, so we're not we have been pressing very hard. So uh, a couple of extra uh, seconds and minutes for you to decide whether you persuade or not is, is perfectly acceptable in the grand scheme of things. Remember, Rome wasn't built in a day, nor was a persuasion attempt. Mm hmm. Uh, I guess I'll go for Aha! Uh -huh. And I can see uh, Lucius Cursor has joined us again in chat. Um, hello there. Greetings. We only had about Papidius before. Or just now. Somebody called Hercules chatting for the first time. Hercules is very happy to see Papirius. All right. How are you doing? Yeah, I said, yeah, sorry. I said uh, Claudius. I missed sorry, I missed that. You're a little bit quiet. Oh, yeah, I see. You, you pinged it. Cool. Platius we're looking at. All right. So we've got our persuasion calculator on the screen there already, which is great. 
Uh, we're going to add the influence of 17 into the top persuader box uh, with the oratory of six. Um, so I can do that. That'll um, This is going to look pretty healthy to begin with. Six in the oratory. Now the loyalty, uh, base loyalty for Platius is six there. Um, we'll add six to that chart. Get over my lag. Uh, he is aligned. Um, so right now we're looking pretty healthy. You could That's an automatic nine or less that you need to roll, but I'll ask you the question anyway. Did you want to add any bribes just to shore up to make sure this is definitely a done deal or you, you can put a, a bribe of zero at the moment, see what happens? Yeah, uh, I'll put 15. 15? Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's clearly expecting some opposition. All right, so um, let's add... Because um, you can put a 15 from the purse of Cato into right under the, the middle of the screen for me. We'll just track that uh, figure. Um, great, that's happening. And we're going to add 15 in bribe up front there. Um, so for people to counter bribe this, they're going to have to fill uh, from their faction treasury. So let's go around the room and ask Quintus Octavius, any counter bribes from you uh, noting the current numbers? No, there will not be. Okay. Uh, Appius Rufius, any counter bribes from you? I want to discuss this with Marka. Marka, do you need help or what? <laughs> <laughs> Take a moment if you need to have a chat, use your, the whisper functions or um, messenger functions or whatever you need to um, to have a have a discussion. Um, because, uh, you know, um, a persuasion is, particularly when you're losing one from a faction, is a, a bit of a front. Um, so uh, just give those senators just a moment, have a, a brief chat. Um, so if you would that. Help, I would uh, be open to a deal. Ah, oh, he's open to a deal. There we go. It's interesting. Ah, uh, you might, might be on mute. <laughs> yeah. doesn't say yes, I might be able to repay the money later because the money is on a uh, senator as opposed to in the faction treasury. So, um, so you you can't uh, provide anything for this, okay? Well, um, I could, but I couldn't provide it in this round because I have minimal in the faction treasury only located on like um, Macedonius. So I could do a loan and then a repayment when the next session came around. Okay, that's problematic, right? Because you already <laughs> put 50 into it. So you have nothing, okay. Um, so if you would... Um, if you would uh... i'm trying to figure out how much would it need to be because i have 20 on my other guy and there's 20 in the thing so if there's 20 yeah, but... there yeah i'm just trying to figure out the thing but um yep. if you have no, uh, nothing in the faction treasury you can't counter it with your money right then and... yeah so it need to come from somebody else i think i've got six in there so but it's not enough to do much there's no point in putting just that if you would uh, what i uh, so then i would like to have um the deal that next round mm -hmm. if i would propose you as one of the consuls that you would uh, first of all put uh, your appointment vote towards mm, quintus flamininus in order to get him a dictator again mm -hmm. and if this doesn't succeed you will vote with all your votes for a dictator for quintus Flaminin flamininus Oh, from your one to be a dictator. Yes, That's assuming a dictator appointment goes to a vote, though, of course. Yes. No, noting it is normally an appointment. Just want to put that on the record. Have we reached a decision? Is it... so um, pardon? Bruce? Robot not even being in this turn. Yeah, considering the number of um, wars that are available. Uh, I mean this turn, right? No, not next turn. This turn, where it is uh, crucial that we have... Coming up to the Senate, yeah. Uh, yeah, this, sorry, um, this turn. <laughs> Numerius Aure Aurelius, I think uh, you're speaking, your microphone's through your laptop as opposed to your headset. Oh, shit. Sounding a bit uh, hollow and echoey. Okay, so but the deal is basically that we're basically trying to get Quinticus Flaminius in as a dictator or Fabius, but Fabius is away. I'm trying to... I, I, I love how this discussion has gone from persuading through to appointments anyway. of dictators. <laughs> this is great. Well, the thing is, the thing is, the yep. thing is, we cannot utilize Flamininus without being a dictator. 
because he cannot be voted as a consul. He was prior consul here, here as his marker. And he is dictator this term, so he can't be elected. So that's what I wanted to say. And so but the he deal can would still be, then be if I get supported as consul, that I will still put him forward to be dictator. Yeah, first in your appointment, uh, 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 via your appointment option. Mm -hmm. And if this does, doesn't succeed, you would vo at least vote for him when a vote comes up. Oh, uh, I'll pay 50, 50, uh, 50 anyone assassinates Quintus. Sum it up. <laughs> if, this doesn't, sorry, if this doesn't go through. <laughs> so, you can't assassinate until the Senate? Yeah. That's true. Sure. All right, so where are we at? Anyway, I was wondering <laughs> where the 15 come from on Plato. Uh, that 15 is the, um, that's the 15 bribe at the moment. So that's where we're tracking it because that's our target senator. Oh. Yep, so that, that 15 will stay with, um, will stay with um, Platius um, regardless of outcome. I think it's okay. Let him do it. I'm still probably going to vote for him as dictator anyway. And <laughs> if I need to counter bribe at another point, I'll make sure I organize my money. I think it's a good idea regardless. I think. Okay. I think we can. I think we'll be okay. I so, think. Appius Rufius, any counter bribes from you? <laughs> then, no. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. No, no. I feel like for the sake of Rome and everyone else, you know what I mean? All right. So this deal uh, is not happening now? It appears not. Oh, oh, okay, uh, Tiberius Cornelius, any counter bribes from you? No. All right. Uh, Mark Witte, any counter bribes from you? No. Nope. Uh, Marcus Decimus, any counter bribes from you? No. Okay, it looks like um, maybe was it money you spent? Maybe not. Who knows? Uh, but nonetheless, uh, roll nine or less. So don't roll anything ten or higher uh, on a 2d6. Oh, oh, of course. That's a far, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, 15 free uh, talents through to Platius. There you go, Mark Wedia. You just got a little bit richer. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. That is, that is extraordinary. Um, that's uh, most unfortunate. Let's finish off Numerius Aurelius's turn. Uh, any um, sponsoring of games today? Uh, no, thank you. Great. Uh, finally, to change of faction leader? Uh, uh, no, thank you. All right, that's not a problem. That was a great, that's a great um, segue there. You know, do you want to counter bribe on a persuasion attempt? And let's talk about dictator appointments. <laughs> uh, I love this game so much; it's fantastic. Okay, let's go to Quintus Octavius, two d six from you, good sir. I'm hoping to pull the war card just for the point I'm annoyed because I was writing that whole deal. No, nah, unfortunately, <laughs> it's going to be an event. Um, so let's go up to an events table first. Random events, Middle Republic, 3D6 when you're ready there, Quintus Octavius. Let's see what we end up with. Uh, it's going to be nine, which is going to give us a drought. <laughs> Two negatives. We so are not yet a good Somebody chance. wants to pull out the drought event card for go. us and slap it up there. There it is. Great. Um, creates a worse drought conditions, so we'll just have to note that for when we're doing some uh, population stuff in, a, in, a, in the brewery near future. All right. So let's just double check our cheat sheet, make sure everything is going on the way we need it to. We've done everybody's initiative. I haven't missed anyone. Is that correct? Well, I need to finish my the rest of mine. Oh, yeah. 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 I was just testing yeah. you. Uh, any persuasion yeah, attempt from you today? No, I'm all good. Uh, any sponsoring of any games? Uh, Rolling no, of Knights? Any of that. Uh, yeah, we'll have, we'll have our lovely elder here just roll for a night free of all charge. Right. Free of charge. And you are going to get? Nothing. Nothing, uh, not sponsoring any games, right? No. Yeah, not nah, good. And finally, any change of faction leader? No, uh, Fabius will be our faction leader. All right, okay, now we've finished the six initiatives that we need to do. Let's go put Rome in order. So, all senators holding a major office get a major marker. Let's crack out those corruption markers. So, any purple tokens, including censors, Pontifus Maximus, uh, pro consoles, you'll all get a corruption marker. I mean, the pro console sort of gets to miss out on it because he's sort of away from Rome. Um, yep, master of horses, Rome consoles, dictators all get a major corruption marker. Make sure everybody's um, concessions are revealed corrupt unless, of course, they're for, like, shipbuilding or anything else like that, which uh, hasn't been activated yet. 
And finally, now we don't have the second Punic War or Gladiator Slave Roll uh, active, which is great. And then finally, um, we're going to go to the Curia and seeing uh, what happens there with our dead people. So HRAO, let's start with our senators. So we're looking for a five or a six to bring reintroduce a senator back into the forum uh, for consideration in future um, forum phases. So uh, let's start with Trentius. 1D6, please. Please, Appius Rufius. And it's going to be, yeah. Sorry, I, yeah. I, I did it. Great. 2D6. That's well. brilliant. So Trentius That's we'll get to have a look at later on. Let's do one for Furious. It was 2D6, he accidentally. Yeah, it was a 2D6. Oh, did I get excited? Yeah, that's yeah, a shame. Sorry. I, Sadly, uh, I, everyone got excited then. I, I missed it. All right, sorry. back to one. And let's repeat the effort. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> you should have had you roll twice. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. All right, let's do it for Furious. Here we go. Another one. Five or six. Nah. So Furious misses out. Okay, let's do for Tax Farmer six first. Yeah. Lucky hands. Tax Farmer six goes in. Um, uh, Sicilian Grain next. These would be out here too. Why is that? Because they were from my senator who died. Oh, okay. Um, so uh, which uh, the lost things? So let's do land commissioner first. I did a two last time. So. Oh yeah, that was for the Sicilian grain. I've just moved okay. that out of the way, so that was a fail. Well, so now we'll do land commission. No, uh, and then finally armaments. No. All right. So let's put those back in order. Okay. All right. So we got. Um, two out of that, didn't we? We've got one concession and one senator. Is that right? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh, well, that's good. All right, that's not too bad. Back to our cheat sheet over here. Uh, all players need to update their faction vote tallies, please. So, yeah. oratory plus knights is what is going to be on your faction dials. And if you happen to have some battle votes, uh, if you're a priest or Pontifus Maximus, make sure you note those. Uh, of course, if you've got special law votes because of some weird statesman, you've got to track those. So, yes, oratory plus knights for everybody else. Don't forget, including people away from Rome. Oh, disregard, not people away from Rome. You do not count people that are away from Rome. Their vote tallies do not count because they're not voting. They're not in the Senate. So everybody that's present in Rome, their oratory plus knights. Uh, we've got a uh, Salwete from... Uh, I'm going to shorten this to Shino. Shino Big, hello there. <laughs> Salve to you. Quidest, how are you going? Great to see you joining in. We're just coming towards the end of the forum phase for turn 12 here in this Republic of Rome board game broadcast. We'll finish up very shortly, Senators. We might do, what, population phase like we normally do and wrap up there before the Senate? I think that would be a good idea. That's a good finish to, from today. And uh, I'll make sure that I record this session and get it up on YouTube so we don't miss an episode like we did for the last one where we missed out on seeing the Senate phase up on YouTube, which is a, a little bit of a bugger, but that's all right. Okay, I think everybody's updated their dials now. So now we can conclude the forum phase and move into the population phase. So we tick the little uh, marker over here, bring us into turn 12's population phase. Uh, and as we see from our cheat sheet over here, um, we're going to now modify the unrest level to what it needs to be. So we're going to have plus one for every drought um, or drought effects and unprosecuted wars. Okay, so we've got two drought effects on the board, I understand. We've got the one in the inactive yep. wars box. We've got the one from the event. The new wars I don't think introduced any droughts. They do not. Um, plus the unprosecuted. So we've got one, two, so we've got a total of four. Is that what I'm reading? Yes. Would this count as a secondary one, though? So, no. well, we consider that one war now, yeah? Yes. One war. So, yeah. so and, they, since they it's one war. It, yeah, and even if, yeah, even if it wasn't, it wouldn't be unprosecuted. Right. Um, yeah, true. So, it brings us to our unrest level of four. Okay. So, we, we, we just gave back what we got rid of. Uh, and then what we're going to see here eventually is um, we're going to see a, a, hear a State of the Republic address from Appius Rufius and the Dictator, uh, and then we'll end up doing the 3D6 plus the popularity of 
the uh, dictator minus the unrest level. So we'll note early on that the popularity of the dictator is zero. So it'll be a minus four to the 3D6 that occurs in just a moment uh, for our final number. But first of all, let us hear from the dictator and Appius Rufius and some stirring words for the State of the Republic address. Over to you, Appius Rufius. Yeah, my fellow senators, uh, soon I will lay down my dictatorship, but um, Rome is in a dire situation, as we can see. By the gods, we need the help of Jupiter Optimus Maximus. And so the thing is that we need strong leaders now. We, we need to scramble all our best leaders. So I see that Scipio Africanus is available again. He was sent out as a governor, but now he is back again. And uh, I also see, uh, see uh, Emilius Paulus Macedonicus is available. I hope that there will be Concordia within the Senate and uh, we will all uh, work together harmoniously in order to bring this situation under control. Um, I hope that uh, the pontiff will not interfere with his religious veto in any uh, well-advised ordering of the Senate and the offices. Moreover, I see that the people are unhappy that we didn't do the land reforms, which we were supposed to do. Maybe we should think about this land reforms again this time. We, we, we should think about it really hard. May I remind my fellow senators that I that I wanted, I set out in my program to, to get these reforms done, but somehow some evil forces behind the curtains did uh, conspire against this. And I hope the people will not be too angry now. I will. I look pretty angry. <laughs> you're, pe you're pretty angry. Yep. <laughs> okay. But at least you're not one of the normal folks. folks uh... <laughs> No, I'm not angry. I think the, the, the man in the street is pretty angry. Yeah? Okay, let's see. A lot of unrest. Let the people speak now. <laughs> let's do it. So we're going to minus four from this roll of 3d6. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Minus oh, four yeah. is four. Ooh, that's, uh, that's not going to be great. If we look at the State oh, of the Republic here. <laughs> oh, holy dooly. Plus five yeah. to the unrest level. At least there's no manpower shortage. The, that the people, still hurts. The people are quite religious, and I think that kind of jab at the, the priests was uh, taking this yeah. attack, on, attack on their uh, daily, <laughs> daily, daily selves. So. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's so, an agreement there. That's well, a high why are we? Uh, why are we at the um, plus? Um, we had four before, right? Yes. Four unrest? And so we, you, you rolled eight <laughs> minus four from the unrest ah, level. Mm. Yep. Um, bring us back to four oh. plus five. Yeah, not not yep. ideal. Not ideal. We should have done these land reforms. I, I, so well, they, they, hate, they, they hate the land reforms. They hate the land reforms. That's why they're yeah, against but you. my popularity. <laughs> they are uh, the yeah. they What's, the what's they that mean for us? An unrest of nine. What are the consequences of that? So that will put us at greater risk, really, at the next population phase, because you can see there that um, if we you suffer really bad the people can revolt we can all lose so um so really i hope your next leader uh hrao has a good popularity mm, yep mm. uh win some wars perhaps well, there we go. Also... my guy over here has a popularity of 10. uh you can only have a popularity of nine so i'm not sure how you got 10. nine really? is the maximum yeah nine is the maximum did i add it on wrong uh, you, you, you'll eventually exhaust any um, um, additional ones, can't, so it'll always we, be nine. Can't we turn a blind eye? Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, maybe we should for this case. Um, <laughs> um, well, let's leave that excitement there. That will wrap up uh, session 16. Noticing YouTube will not show the last session that we had, which will miss just the Senate phase. So we didn't miss it too many phases, just the last Senate phase. But next uh, time we play, which is hopefully next week, we'll get to see this coming Senate phase for turn 12, uh, which will come up. But for now, uh, we will say uh, goodbye to our senators and uh, we'll do a normal end of session recap like we normally like to do to see where we're at. But for now, senators, thanks for today. If you'd like to say a wallete to our crowd at home. Wallete. Wallete. And if you're watching live, don't go away. We'll be
All right, we are back for the end of session review here for uh, session 16 of the Republic of Rome board game broadcast. We've just finished turn 12's population phase, uh, and let's talk about it. Um, so the next time we play, we're going to hit that Senate phase. It's going to be pretty critical. It's starting to look a bit rough now. Um, that uh, terrible, <laughs> terrible uh, speech from the, the dictator, the State of the Republic address, didn't go very well. We're now hitting at 9 in the unrest level, um, which is pretty bad. Now, sh depending on who the next HRA is, a lot of that popularity could potentially cancel some of that. But again, a really poor role starts to put us into pretty dangerous territory. Um, but things going well in the pending combat phase, hopefully they defeat a few wars and they can bring that unrest level down, um, which in turn is what we need to talk about. So they stalemated out on the first Gallic War, which is was not ideal. I mean, any anything that's not a victory hurts the Republic in, in the long run. And here we've got uh, five wars. Um, some of them pretty easy. They they should pretty, if they're smart enough. They'll be able to knock off the first of the third Spanish revolts, the Lustinian War, and they should be able to get the province back with Sicilia, which revolted. Those are strength six and two respectively. They're a little bit weaker. So there's two guaranteed victories, albeit only one will give them the reduction in unrest level. Uh, and they'll want to get rid of that last anymore anyway to stop the the matching war, which will come the next uh, next turn, um, which they drew as well, the Numantine War with a strength of eight. Uh, so that's that's frustrating. Um, that first Gallic War is still there. Oh, they'll, they'll probably leave Julius there and look to prosecute that again because that's at age four already. That's starting to get into that dangerous territory again. Um, uh, so, yeah, they'll, they'll look to get rid of that first. Well, I'm also looking at the chat as well. Somebody's asked if Ulysses can fight now that he's become an elder. Yeah, if he stays, I think we agreed on from the elder rules, if they become an elder while out there, they can stay out there and continue to prosecute the war. But once they come back, they can't be sent out again uh, in a future in a future turn. Um, I think that's where we discussed it. And we would have to look at the fine rules of... Um, the Avalon Hills edition, which is where the aging rules come from, to see where it speaks to that or not. But um, yeah, so that's uh, I guess a good question. Uh, yeah, Terentius should have revolted, uh, so he wasn't going to succumb to the uh, yes, the loss. Yeah, they, that's all right. They lost the province uh, out there. It was in Sicilia, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. If he revolted, he wouldn't have been subject to the the event that they drew again, which was the internal disorder that they have to deal with. So there's more losses on the horizon potentially. So that Macedonian War, strength over 20, and then they got the Third Punic War still sitting there as well. I, I very much expect they'll leave the Macedonian Wars again. Um, they're not going to even probably bother, I reckon. The Senate phase, they'll look to f prosecute First Gallic, the Lustinian, the Sicilia. Uh, and I don't know, forces-wise, if they'll have the strength they may not be able to prosecute Third Punic, so they'll just hit those three, I reckon. First Gallic, Lustinian, and, and Sicilia. But they'll run the numbers as they normally do. If they can defeat those three successfully, um, then they're, they're good to go. Um, but if they fail in any one of those three, that will be game over. So they are must-wins. They must win those three uh, to keep this game alive, to keep the Republic alive. So it will be an interesting next session that we play. Um, so it looks like we won't play next week, but we should be able to play the week after, um, which is uh, all the same. So continue to watch our social media or otherwise uh, to watch this next session. Uh, look, this has been fantastic again for session 16. Uh, I'm Decimus Aurelius. You're watching the Roman Twitch channel uh, on Twitch, brought to you by Nova Roma. Uh, it's been a blast again. And look, uh, until next time, it's been fantastic. Well, let's